What's better than one Loki running around causing mayhem? How about multiple Lokis running around causing mayhem? That's right, just when you couldn't be more excited for the Loki TV show, today's theory is going to completely blow your mind by suggesting Loki is going to be fighting a bunch of other Lokis in his series. Big thanks to Reddit's The Mediocre Critic for this theory, who is anything but mediocre if you ask me, for pointing this out. How exactly will it work? And what will it do for Loki's overall character? Well, let's get into it right now. Avengers Infinity War was not playing around when it came to establishing the threat of Thanos the Mad Titan. The opening scene sees the Asgardians completely decimated and a broken down Thor at his most vulnerable. Loki is there and just when you think he might be trying to save his life by switching allegiances, he attempts a surprise attack on Thanos. Big mistake. Thanos responds by choking the life out of the trickster god. We've seen Loki fake his death before, so we the audience all were holding out hope that this was some sort of illusion. But sadly, that wasn't so. Our Loki that we had gotten to know and love was no more. But this is the MCU. No one ever really stays dead unless your name is Uncle Ben. Endgame found a way to not only bring Loki back to life, but also set him up for a new Disney Plus TV show centered around him. That's not too shabby. I think a good Thanos choking is a small price to pay for your own TV show. But obviously there's a twist. The Loki that we're following in the show is 2012 Loki, who was just defeated by the Avengers and hasn't gone through his transformative goodish guy arc that we see in Thor The Dark World and Thor Ragnarok. Now, his shenanigans changing the timeline has caused serious damage and the TVA recruits him to fix it. But why? As the trailers really make clear, Loki is the most untrustworthy ally you can have. He's literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. Why is the TVA so invested in having Loki help them fix things? Besides the fact that they probably just want to be standing next to Tom Hiddleston, what if it's because the problems they're facing are other variant Lokis? Did Loki's actions with the Tesseract cause other variants of Loki throughout time to branch off and cause anomalies? Not only would that story give us more than double the Tom Hiddleston were about to see on screen, but it would explain why Mobius M. Mobius enlists Loki's help. Frame everything you've seen in the trailers for Loki with that mindset and you'll see it makes a ton of sense overall. I'll say it again, our variant Loki has to hunt down all the various other variant Lokis that are now causing huge timeline discrepancies with their existence. That's why there's the scene of Loki having to sign off on everything he's ever said in his life. Yes, it's a funny scene at first, but why would that really be necessary? Because now other Lokis exist, and with all the variants running around, they have to preserve Loki's original timeline, or something something along those lines. This creates the most interesting direction for the show possible, because this show should function in two ways. The first is obviously it should be a fun time travel show highlighting one of the MCU's best characters, but it also needs to help Loki grow into the person his other self became in the original timeline of things. And what better way to do that than for this Loki to meet other versions of himself to teach him different lessons? Kind of like a Christmas Carol, but with more superheroes and general mischief. Anyway, look at all the different Lokis we see in the trailer alone, and a lot of it is questionable unless you consider that these may not all be the same Loki. Just briefly, we catch glimpses of a rundown, seemingly President Loki, a Loki sitting on the throne of Asgard, a possible old Loki, and even glimpses of Lady Loki, among others. All of this makes more sense if you consider that Loki will be fighting Loki variants, and it makes Mobius's line of wanting Loki's unique Loki perspective all the more ironic. What this will do overall is allow Loki to confront different extreme versions of himself, and by facing those doppelgangers, Loki will undergo a dramatic character transformation that turns him into the fun anti-hero we know he can be. But so what, right? Where does this all lead? Just like it took Wanda 8 episodes to become the Scarlet Witch, and it took Sam 6 episodes to become Captain America, the question is, who will Loki be at the end of his series? After he defeats all the variants and learns how to be a generally better individual than what he was, what's going to happen to him? He's a variant after all, and I think the Loki show is going to reinforce that variants shouldn't exist. Are we in for a second Loki death in the MCU? How tragic would that be? Both times that Loki becomes a hero, he has to die. Or is the MCU going to find a way around that? By dispatching all the other variants, will the TVA allow this Loki to live, but only if he continues working for them? That would be a solid setup for a second season. Or could we see a situation where someone like Mobius is supposed to kill Loki at the end of this series to wipe out loose ends, but decides to let him go instead? 
I legitimately don't know which version I like more, but I do know that I can't handle Loki dying horribly a second time. And hey, if this allows him to eventually have a Thor reunion, I'm all for it. I really don't want a Phil Coulson situation where the character dies in the movie, is brought back for a TV show, but then there's never a situation where he reveals himself alive to people like Thor. Fingers crossed he shows up in Thor Love and Thunder, you know, as long as he lives that long. Now, Loki can go ahead and fight as many Lokis as he wants, but you know what I really want? A Hulk versus Loki rematch. Now, is that too much to ask? Come on, Marvel. It's what everyone wants. Well, okay, probably not what Loki wants, but everybody else. 